Magnetic refrigeration is a cooling technology based on the magnetocaloric effect. This technique can be used to attain extremely low temperatures, as well as the ranges used in common refrigerators. Compared to traditional gas compression refrigeration, magnetic refrigeration is safer, quieter, more compact, has a higher cooling efficiency, and is more environmentally friendly because it does not use harmful, ozone-depleting coolant gases. The effect was first observed by French physicist P. Weiss and Swiss physicist A. Picard in 1917. The fundamental principle was suggested by P. Debye and W. G. Arquette. The first working magnetic refrigerators were constructed by several groups beginning in 1933. Magnetic refrigeration was the first method developed for cooling below about 0.3 K. The magnetocaloric effect. The magnetocaloric effect is a magnetothermodynamic phenomenon in which a temperature change of a suitable material is caused by exposing the material to a changing magnetic field. This is also known by low-temperature physicists as adiabatic demagnetization. In that part of the refrigeration process, a decrease in the strength of an externally applied magnetic field allows the magnetic domains of a magnetocaloric material to become disoriented from the magnetic field by the agitating action of the thermal energy present in the material. If the material is isolated so that no energy is allowed to migrate into the material during this time, the temperature drops as the domains absorb the thermal energy to perform their reorientation. The randomization of the domains occurs in a similar fashion to the randomization at the Curie temperature of a ferromagnetic material, except that magnetic dipoles overcome a decreasing external magnetic field while energy remains constant. Instead of magnetic domains being disrupted from internal ferromagnetism as energy is added, one of the most notable examples of the magnetocaloric effect is in the chemical element gadolinium and some of its alloys. Gadolinium's temperature increases when it enters certain magnetic fields. When it leaves the magnetic field, the temperature drops. The effect is considerably stronger for the gadolinium alloy. Praseodymium alloy with nickel has such a strong magnetocaloric effect that it has allowed scientists to approach to within 1 millikelvin, one thousandth of a degree of absolute zero. Equation The magnetocaloric effect can be quantified with the equation below, where T is the temperature, H is the applied magnetic field, C is the heat capacity of the working magnet and M is the magnetization of the refrigerant. From the equation we can see that magnetocaloric effect can be enhanced by applying a large field, using a magnet with a small heat capacity, using a magnet with a large change in magnetization versus temperature at a constant magnetic field. Thermodynamic cycle The cycle is performed as a refrigeration cycle that is analogous to the Carnot refrigeration cycle, but with increases and decreases in magnetic field strength instead of increases and decreases in pressure. It can be described at a starting point whereby the chosen working substance is introduced into a magnetic field, i.e., the magnetic flux density is increased. The working material is the refrigerant, and starts in thermal equilibrium with the refrigerated environment. Adiabatic magnetization. A magnetocaloric substance is placed in an insulated environment. The increasing external magnetic field causes the magnetic dipoles of the atoms to align, thereby decreasing the material's magnetic entropy and heat capacity. Since overall energy is not lost and therefore total entropy is not reduced, the net result is that the substance is heated. Isomagnetic enthalpic transfer. This added heat can then be removed by a fluid or gas, gaseous or liquid helium. For example, the magnetic field is held constant to prevent the dipoles from reabsorbing the heat. Once sufficiently cooled, the magnetocaloric substance and the coolant are separated. Adiabatic demagnetization. The substance is returned to another adiabatic condition so the total entropy remains constant. 
However, this time the magnetic field is decreased, the thermal energy causes the magnetic moments to overcome the field, and thus the sample cools, i.e., an adiabatic temperature change. Energy transfers from thermal entropy to magnetic entropy. Isomagnetic entropic transfer. The magnetic field is held constant to prevent the material from reheating. The material is placed in thermal contact with the environment to be refrigerated. Because the working material is cooler than the refrigerated environment, heat energy migrates into the working material. Once the refrigerant and refrigerated environment are in thermal equilibrium, the cycle can restart. Applied technique The basic operating principle of an adiabatic demagnetization refrigerator is the use of a strong magnetic field to control the entropy of a sample of material, often called the refrigerant. Magnetic field constrains the orientation of magnetic dipoles in the refrigerant. The stronger the magnetic field, the more aligned the dipoles are corresponding to lower entropy and heat capacity because the material has lost some of its internal degrees of freedom. If the refrigerant is kept at a constant temperature through thermal contact with the heat sink while the magnetic field is switched on, the refrigerant must lose some energy because it is equilibrated with the heat sink. When the magnetic field is subsequently switched off, the heat capacity of the refrigerant rises again because the degrees of freedom associated with orientation of the dipoles are once again liberated, pulling their share of equipartitioned energy from the motion of the molecules, thereby lowering the overall temperature of a system with decreased energy. Since the system is now insulated when the magnetic field is switched off, the process is adiabatic, i.e., the system can no longer exchange energy with its surroundings, and its temperature decreases below its initial value, that of the heat sink. The operation of a standard ADR proceeds roughly as follows. First, a strong magnetic field is applied to the refrigerant forcing its various magnetic dipoles to align and putting these degrees of freedom of the refrigerant into a state of lowered entropy. The heat sink then absorbs the heat released by the refrigerant due to its loss of entropy. Thermal contact with the heat sink is then broken so that the system is insulated and the magnetic field is switched off increasing the heat capacity of the refrigerant, thus decreasing its temperature below the temperature of the heat sink. In practice, the magnetic field is decreased slowly in order to provide continuous cooling and keep the sample at an approximately constant low temperature. Once the field falls to zero or to some low limiting value determined by the properties of the refrigerant, the cooling power of the ADR vanishes and heat leaks will cause the refrigerant to warm up. Working materials. The magnetocaloric effect is an intrinsic property of a magnetic solid. This thermal response of a solid to the application or removal of magnetic fields is maximized when the solid is near its magnetic ordering temperature. Thus, the materials considered for magnetic refrigeration devices should be magnetic materials with a magnetic phase transition temperature near the temperature region of interest. For refrigerators that could be used in the home, this temperature is room temperature. The temperature change can be further increased when the order parameter of the phase transition change is strongly within the temperature range of interest. The magnitudes of the magnetic entropy and the adiabatic temperature changes are strongly dependent upon the magnetic ordering process. The magnitude is generally small in antiferromagnets, ferrimagnets and spin glass systems but can be much larger for ferromagnets that undergo a magnetic phase transition. First order phase transitions are characterized by a discontinuity in the magnetization changes with temperature, resulting in a latent heat. Second order phase transitions do not have this latent heat associated with the phase transition. 
In the late 1990s Peckark C. and Schneidner reported a magnetic entropy change in GD5 that was about 50% larger than that reported for GD metal, which had the largest known magnetic entropy change at the time. This giant magnetic caloric effect occurred at 270 K, which is lower than that of GD. Since the MCE occurs below room temperature, these materials would not be suitable for refrigerators operating at room temperature. Since then other alloys have also demonstrated the giant magnetic caloric effect. These include GD54, La13HX and MNFEP1-XAZX alloys. Gadolinium and its alloys undergo second-order phase transitions that have no magnetic or thermal hysteresis. However, the use of rare earth elements makes these materials very expensive. Ni2 MNX Husler alloys are also promising candidates for magnetic cooling applications because they have Curie temperatures near room temperature, and, depending on composition, can have martensitic phase transformations near room temperature. These materials exhibit the magnetic shape memory effect and can also be used as actuators, energy harvesting devices, and sensors. When the martensitic transformation temperature and the Curie temperature are the same the magnitude of the magnetic entropy change is the largest. In February 2014, GE announced the development of the functional NIEMN based magnetic refrigerator. The development of this technology is very material dependent and will likely not replace vapor compression refrigeration without significantly improved materials that are cheap, abundant, and exhibit much larger magnetic caloric effects over a larger range of temperatures. Such materials need to show significant temperature changes under a field of 2 tesla or less, so that permanent magnets can be used for the production of the magnetic field. Paramagnetic salts The original proposed refrigerant was a paramagnetic salt, such as cerium magnesium nitrate. The active magnetic dipoles in this case are those of the electron shells of the paramagnetic atoms. In a paramagnetic salt ADR, the heat sink is usually provided by a pumped 4 He or 3 He cryostat. An easily attainable anti-magnetic field is generally required for initial magnetization. The minimum temperature attainable is determined by the self-magnetization tendencies of the refrigerant salt, but temperatures from 1 to 100 Mk are accessible. Dilution refrigerators had for many years supplanted paramagnetic salt ADRs, but interest in space-based and simple-to-use lab ADRs has remained. Due to the complexity and unreliability of the dilution refrigerator eventually paramagnetic salts become either diamagnetic or ferromagnetic, limiting the lowest temperature that can be reached using this method. Nuclear demagnetization One variant of adiabatic demagnetization that continues to find substantial research application is nuclear demagnetization. Refrigeration NDR follows the same principles, but in this case the cooling power arises from the magnetic dipoles of the nuclei of the refrigerant atoms, rather than their electron configurations. Since these dipoles are of much smaller magnitude, they are less prone to self-alignment and have lower intrinsic minimum fields. This allows NDR to cool the nuclear spin system to very low temperatures, often 1 micro K or below. Unfortunately, the small magnitudes of nuclear magnetic dipoles also makes them less inclined to align to external fields. Magnetic fields of 3 teslas or greater are often needed for the initial magnetization step of NDR. In NDR systems, the initial heat sink must sit at very low temperatures. This pre-cooling is often provided by the mixing chamber of a dilution refrigerator or a paramagnetic salt. Commercial development, research and a demonstration proof of concept in 2001 succeeded in applying commercial grade materials and permanent magnets at room temperatures to construct a magnetic caloric refrigerator on August 20, 2007, the Riso National Laboratory at the Technical University of Denmark.
claim to have reached a milestone in their magnetic cooling research when they reported a temperature span of 8.7 K. They hope to introduce the first commercial applications of the technology by 2010. As of 2013 this technology had proven commercially viable only for ultra-low temperature cryogenic applications available for decades. Magnetic caloric refrigeration systems are composed of pumps, motors, secondary fluids, heat exchangers of different types, magnets and magnetic materials. These processes are greatly affected by irreversibilities and should be adequately considered. At year-end, Cool Tech Applications announced that its first commercial refrigeration equipment would enter the market in 2014. At the 2015 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, a consortium of Higher Astronautics Corporation of America and BASF presented the first cooling appliance. BASF claim of their technology a 35% improvement over using compressors current and future uses thermal and magnetic hysteresis problems remain to be solved for first order phase transition materials that exhibit the GMCE. One potential application is in spacecraft. Vapor compression refrigeration units typically achieve performance coefficients of 60% of that of a theoretical ideal Carnot cycle, much higher than current MISTER technology. Small domestic refrigerators are however much less efficient. In 2014 giant anisotropic behavior of the magnetic caloric effect was found in HOMN205 at 10K. The anisotropy of the magnetic entropy change gives rise to a large rotating MCE offering the possibility to build simplified, compact, and efficient magnetic cooling systems by rotating it in a constant magnetic field. History the effect was discovered using nickel in 1917 by French physicist Pierre Weiss and August Percard. Originally, the cooling effect was less than 0.5 kT. Major advances first appeared in the late 1920s when cooling via adiabatic demagnetization was independently proposed by Peter Debye in 1926 and chemistry Nobel laureate William F. GRK in 1927. It was first demonstrated experimentally by GRK and his colleague D. P. McDougall in 1933 for cryogenic purposes when they reached 0.25 K. Between 1933 and 1997, advances in MCE cooling occurred. In 1997, the first near-room temperature proof-of-concept magnetic refrigerator was demonstrated by Carl A. Schneidner, Jr., by the Iowa State University at Ames Laboratory. This event attracted interest from scientists and companies worldwide who started developing new kinds of room temperature materials and magnetic refrigerator designs. A major breakthrough came 2002 when a group at the University of Amsterdam demonstrated the giant magnetic caloric effect in MNFE alloys that are based on abundant materials. Refrigerators based on the magnetic caloric effect have been demonstrated in laboratories using magnetic fields starting at 0.6 T up to 10 T. Magnetic fields above 2 T are difficult to produce with permanent magnets and are produced by a superconducting magnet. Room temperature devices Recent research has focused on near room temperature. Constructed examples of room temperature magnetic refrigerators include, in one example, Professor Carl A. Schneidner, Jr., unveiled a proof-of-concept magnetic refrigerator near room temperature on February 20, 1997. He also announced the discovery of the GMC in GD5C2GE2 on June 9, 1997. Since then, hundreds of peer-reviewed articles have been written describing materials exhibiting magnetic caloric effects.